So I grew up in Winkler, Manitoba, where my dad has been a pastor for the past 33 years. I had a fairly standard Christian upbringing, as you might imagine. I was baptized as a teenager and went off to Bible college after graduation. I spent one year at Briarcrest Bible College in general studies. It was during this year that I met Jay. We dated for a brief year before we got engaged, and it wasn't until we were married that my faith was truly challenged. A couple weeks after we were married, Jay was diagnosed with cancer. I've never felt so helpless in my life. Now, as you can see, thankfully God chose to heal him, but it was a really challenging time for us. Looking back now, I can see just how immature my faith really was. Sure, I was praying a lot about the whole situation, but truthfully, I was only going to be okay with one outcome. I didn't trust that God was enough for me. I was filled with fear, anxiety, and worry. A couple of months after his surgery, Jay was cancer-free. We were wanting to move away so Jay could go to school, but his doctor strongly recommended that we didn't do anything until he'd been cancer-free for two years, as that's when the chance of it returning would drop significantly. So every six weeks, he would go for blood work. Every three months, he'd have uh, more CT scans. So again, more worrying, more anxiety, and more fear. Those feelings began to be so normal that they didn't even stand out to me anymore. I didn't view them as sinful at all. In fact, I thought they were completely justified. But Matthew 6.34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. So clearly, I had let sin take over. But after that two-year mark, we packed up and moved to BC so Jay could go to school. Right out of school, he was offered a job here in Saskatoon. So we made the move to the province he said he would never live in. My immature faith continued to show as our marriage fell apart. Too proud to seek help, it nearly ended in divorce. I spent countless nights over the years praying and crying out to God to help me love my husband again. It was when we found out we were expecting our first child that everything changed for us. And no, it wasn't the baby that changed us, it was God. We went from two people who could hardly stand to be in the same room with each other to two people who loved each other the way Christ says to love, which is found in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, and 6. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not listen, or it does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. So many of us know these verses, but knowing it and doing it are so very different, and without Christ, this just isn't possible. So although we had been married for seven years at this point, it really felt like it was just the beginning. The desire to know God was back. For the first time, I truly found it interesting to listen to sermons and to study God's Word. God has been at work in my life these last few years doing a complete overhaul on me, opening my eyes to His sovereignty, which has changed everything, revealing to me my pride, selfishness, and arrogance, along with countless other sins. My faith has continued to grow, seeing myself for what I truly am, a sinner in need of a Savior who is saved by grace through faith, not of my own doing, but a gift from God. I love the process of sanctification, how assuring to look back and see the changes, and how amazing to see God's faithfulness. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation.
come to the bread and we remember that Christ, Christ has given us that. Christ passed bread to his disciples, broke that bread and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this and remember to be this. Remember our Lord's name. that we studied in our passage today, we see that the Lord Jesus himself prays for his people and he prays that the Father would forgive us. And yet, the Bible tells us that apart from the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So it's not enough that Jesus prays for our forgiveness. The price must be paid. And Jesus himself paid the price in our place, that our forgiveness will be purchased. Here in our passage uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You see, the Lord's death, his shedding of his blood, wasn't the end, it was the beginning. Of the church. It was the purchase by his own blood. He purchased his bride. You and me in Christ. Bought at a price. And we do this 
until he comes again, because not only did he die, but he was also raised. And he ascended to glory, where he stands now interceding at the right hand of the Father, and one day he is coming again. And until he does, we remember. He died. He paid our price. And he's coming back for us. Let's remember our Lord.
you all for joining us as we came together to worship today. We hope that you'll stick around and have some refreshments and allow us time to fellowship with you. Have a great weekend to serve our Lord today.